You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa received today a Libya palace in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa, the senior advisor to the U.S. President Jared Kushner and his accompanying delegation on the occasion of his visit to the kingdom as part of his tour in the region, who conveyed to His Majesty the greetings and appreciation of the U.S. President and his wishes of abundant health and happiness. His Majesty welcomed the guest and asked him to convey his greetings to the U.S. President Donald Trump. His Majesty reviewed with Kushner the historic deep-rooted relations between the two countries, all means of developing them on all levels. His Majesty expressed pride in the strategic relations between Bahrain and the U.S., noting the development of bilateral cooperation in many fields in light of the joint keenness on developing and strengthening these ties. His Majesty hailed the pivotal role of the U.S. administration and its efforts that are aimed at achieving security, peace and stability in the Middle East. For his part, Jared Kushner expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the warm welcome and gracious hospitality during his visit, commending the Kingdom's supporting stances to the efforts of achieving peace and security in the region. Points of view on a number of mutual interest affairs have been exchanged and the current regional and international developments have also been discussed during the meeting. The Representatives' Council held its weekly meeting today, presided over by its speaker, Fawzia bint Abdullah Zena, where the council referred a number of draft laws to the relevant committees on the labor law, ratification of a number of international agreements, penal code, child law, the general budget, and the employment of people with disabilities. The council approved issuing a statement on the decision of the non-renewal of the International Monitoring Mission in Khalil City in Palestine. The council also referred a proposal to the Public Facilities and Environment Committee that exempts the poor families of a deceased from paying paying the electricity bills. Under the patronage of the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the second International Fire Operations Conference was held in the presence of a number of ambassadors, senior officials in the public and private sectors. The conference is organized by the Ministry in partnership with Saudi Aramco and the International Association of Fire Chiefs, the IAFC, with the participation of directors of civil defense of the GCC, the U.S., and a number of brotherly and friendly countries, and discusses a number of topics related to developing civil defense work and reviewing a successful experience at the International level. In a statement, the minister affirmed that the conference reflects the kingdom's status on the map of international conferences, exhibitions and events. He noted that Bahrain has come a long way in ensuring the public safety of all citizens and residents, adding that awareness is an essential part of the security system, which requires working on exchanging experiences and keeping up with the latest technologies in the field. For his part, the chairman of the conference, engineer Ghassan Abul Faraj, delivered a speech in which he affirmed that the conference is a testimony to the keenness of all to develop the latest latest methods and techniques of this profession. He reviewed the common challenges and solutions that developed the profession and announced the formation of a new system for the profession, which is the Regional Advisory Council of the International Association of Fire Chiefs. The chief of the IAFC, Dan Eggleston, affirmed that the conference is a historic event that marks the formation of new cross-border relations. He also added that its success is the result of the cooperation and partnership with Saudi Aramco and the civil defense in Bahrain. Deputy General Director of Civil Defense, Colonel Ali Al-Houti, delivered a speech in which he he praised the Minister of Interior's support of the conference, noting his keenness on improving the technical levels of the civil defense teams. Saudi Aramco's Executive Director of Industrial Safety and Security, Engineer Ali Mohammed Zahrani, delivered a speech in which he emphasized the company's interest in reaching the highest international standards. The Minister of Interior honored the organizers of the conference, guests of honor, partners and sponsoring companies, and praised their keenness to hold the conference in Bahrain.
In implementing the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil bin Hamad Ali Hamidan, urged unregistered job seekers on the list of job seekers at the ministry to register in the National Employment Program to benefit from the insurance against unemployment, in addition to the training and career opportunities available at the ministry to integrate them in the private sector institutions of the labor market. The Minister of Labor visited the Employment Services Office at the ministry to review the procedures for the registration of job seekers and the facilities provided to them as well as to meet with the auditors and listen to their observations on the employment and rehab services provided by the ministry. Hamidan stated that the former job seekers will be enrolled in the national program of employment automatically and they should take into account continuing the follow-ups at the ministry according to the set dates. He expressed hope that all officials and civil efforts will collaborate to con contribute to the success of this vital program. The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamidan, received today a delegation from the International Monetary Fund, headed by Bikas Joshi, who is currently visiting the kingdom as part of her duties in preparing the periodic report on the economic situation of member states of the fund, including the Kingdom of Bahrain. The minister briefed the delegation on the latest developments and achievements made by Bahrain in the field of work, training job seekers, and finding suitable jobs for them within the framework of efforts to protect the rights of job seekers and training in the private sector, as well as the development and support support of small and medium enterprises. They also discussed the details of the National Employment Program and the strategic vision for its implementation within the systems and policies which aim to strengthen government policies to give priority to the Bahraini citizen to be the first choice in employment in the labor market while maintaining the flexibility of the labor market to attract the skills and investments that enhance the national economy. He stressed the readiness to cooperate with the International Monetary Fund to serve Bahrain's national economy. At the invitation of Prince Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud Charity Foundation and with the participation of the Chairman of the Board of Directors of the King Faisal Center for Research and Islamic Studies, His Royal Highness Prince Turkil Faisal, the Minister of Information Affairs, Ali bin Mohammed Al Rumehi, participated in the main sessions of the MISC Media Forum held in the Saudi capital, Riyadh. The forum discusses the practices of counterfeiting media content, aims to find solutions to stop false and misleading news, and addresses the proliferation of forms and images of counterfeiting media which negatively affect the community. The forum also discusses the reality of the transition of media from the traditional to the modern and its methods in forming public opinion. The National Bureau for Revenue, the NBR, held two workshops yesterday for retail and wholesale vendors, followed by an interactive demo center providing on-spot assistance and information regarding VAT at the Ministry of Finance and National Economy. The demo center is designed to provide vendors with a live step-by-step -step guide on VAT readiness and is part of the NBR's efforts in ensuring the correct implementation of VAT in Bahrain. The workshops were followed by access to the live demo center that provided an interactive experience on technicalities of VAT to ensure vendor readiness on VAT. VAT application. The workshops and demo center are part of the NBR's commitment to increase public and private stakeholders' awareness and transparency regarding the treatment of VAT across all sectors. The NBR highlighted the importance of spreading awareness on VAT technicalities at this initial phase, given that companies with an annual revenue of 500,000 Bahraini dinars to 5 million are set to register for VAT by June of this year. Thailand inaugurated the 63rd edition of the Bangkok Gems and Jewelry Fair, which is organized twice a year by the Department of International Trade Promotion. More in this feature with Mohamed Youssef. The Bangkok Gems and Jewelry Fair is one of the world's most renowned and longest celebrated gems and jewelry trade fair in the industry. The 63rd edition was inaugurated on the 20th of February by Her Royal Highness the Princess of Thailand, Sariwa Nawari Nariratana. The fair is regarded as a significant trading arena where all key players in the global gems and jewelry business can achieve their purposes of sourcing, trading and networking. Bangkok Gems and Jewelry Trade Show is a platform where we um, shows our where our exhibitors in Thailand shows their um, products to the world. And uh, every year we invite um, importers um, and people in this business from around the world to Thailand. So it's like it's a major event where. Uh, buyers and importers meet in Thailand to show to the world our um, our strength 
of our Bangkok gems and jewelry industry. The event included numerous number of activities, from artistic performances to fashion shows, showcasing the top jewelry products and businesses participating in the event. The fair attracted a large number of visitors from all around the world, including a Bahraini delegation who are highly interested in the gems and jewelry business. Our purpose to bring a delegation from Bahrain to Thailand is to enhance the uh, jewelry industry in Thailand and related uh, industry. And uh, you have to know that industry, jewelry industry in Thailand is the third largest export products of Thailand. It value about uh, 23,000 million baht. 23,000 million baht, that is the third largest export of Thailand. And uh, we are happy that this year we have uh, many businessmen from Bahrain to join us. And then we are happy that our businessmen come and then they did not only uh, purchase a uh, jewelry product, they purchased machine also, like a uh, machine to produce jewelry, to design jewelry also. That means they, uh, they, they enhance uh, the business from a uh, finished product to a uh, factory. I visit the Gems and Jewelry Bangkok Fair every year, but for this year I was invited by the Embassy of uh, Thailand in Bahrain, uh, along with a, with a uh, Bahraini delegation. Uh, and uh, I have two reasons actually that I'm coming and visiting this year, is the jewelry and meeting my suppliers and also meeting new suppliers for the machinery for the uh, gold factory uh, project that I'm starting um, that I announced um, on the 6th of January uh, along with the support of EDB uh, that is happening in uh, BIP inshallah in the investment park. The event also included the participation of 900 companies and 2,200 pavilions from selected domestic and international exhibitors. Our company name uh, Vatana Gems from Bangkok, Thailand. Um, we are a manufacturer and factory. We produce our products here based in Bangkok, Thailand. Um, we have, have been exhibiting at this show for 62 times. We also exhibit in um, many shows in many different countries, uh, in Europe, in, in uh, America as well. And um, our products are 18 karat gold uh, with diamonds and color stones. And we also make in white gold, yellow gold and in pink gold as well. Our business is in north of Thailand, in Nakhon Suan, and we uh, opened the business for around like 30 years already. And our shop's name is Nara James. It's very nice and a good event for um, we, we are here in the new phase, uh, which is like we, even though we're doing a business for a long time, but we have no chance to like open to the international. So here is a good chance for us to be like a good reputa uh, reputation for others. We participate in Bangkok, Hong Kong, Bahrain. We have been Bantam and uh, Dubai. So we specialize in the handmade jewelry like this. So we working with the uh, semi precious gold jewelry. Yeah, and we import for the outside, the, um, I mean, retail or something. So we've been par participating for more than 30 years and uh, my dad has been, uh, he initially started the business in Thailand. So he is one of the most oldest uh, exhibitor in the show. That's how we started and then I went to GIA in Carlsbad and then I joined the business. And we specialize in fancy colored diamonds, mainly natural stones. And for this fair, we decided to do a production range. So we wanted to bring designs with uh, made jewellery rather than just exhibiting our loose stones, just so we can show people what sort of imagination and how beautiful things can look. They don't always have to be totally perfect. Um, some of our pieces have slightly lower grade stones, but setting them correctly in a really outstanding design just brings forward the beautiful, um, just showcases how amazing diamonds are. The constant keenness of Thailand to organize this event twice a year approves the importance of the gems and jewelry business and its contributions in enhancing the business and tourism sectors. 
The Bangkok Gem and Jewelry Fair is a globally trusted marketplace offering a wide range of quality products, sensitive resources and innovative designs. Coming in its 63rd edition proves its continuous success on the global level. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamad Youssef.